Okay, I'm going to assume we're live. Mary, just checking you can hear me. Yep. Yep, okay, super, thank you. Hello everybody, welcome to AMA number 43. It is the 19th of October, 2020 at 3.15 p.m. UTC. We have today Mary Camacho, Executive Director. Uh, Art Brock, Co-Founder and CTO. And myself, David Atkinson, Commercial Director. Before we jump into it, some thank yous. So firstly, thank you to everybody who's out there building right now. I've been interviewing people for the ecosystem sessions and uh, for some of you watching this, you might have seen some of those interviews. So we're sharing some of the appreciation for those who've been building for one, two, sometimes longer. In fact, I was talking to the Beehive guys today and uh, they mentioned they first started imagining building on Holochain six or seven years ago. So <laughs> when they started following you on Twitter. All right. So thank you to everybody who's who's building, people who ask questions for today, those of you who have been testing RSM, uh, those of you who are getting involved in the ecosystem in, in varying capacities. Uh, if you want to get involved in an upcoming event, please go to holo.host forward slash events. Uh, and if you want to get involved more in conversation, uh, forum.holochain.org is a good place to start. All right, there's a series of useful links, both organization updates, a link to a new milestone roadmap, a demo of the first hosted app in browser, as well as a series of RSM publications. So all of these have been pasted in the description uh, for, you, for you to follow. So on that note, Mary, we've been asked for just a, a, a few times about a roadmap and if we could give any indication on where we are and what's coming before for beta. So I believe you've got something to share with us today. Yeah, we should be uh, doing a screen share. We've actually just posted this. Um, so, so we- Oh, can I just the... interrupt? So if you wanna take it, if you're tempted to take a screenshot right now with Mary and Art and my face in there, you can just go to the website and look. It's okay, <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need to take a screenshot and you can find it on hollow.host forward slash roadmap. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> well, you took you took my the, the wind out of my sail. <laughs> so this was just up uh, published today up on the website. So um, it replaces what had been there as the roadmap. Um, you'll the couple things I'll just quickly say about it. There, the medium article that the post that just went out uh, the whole of today went out on Thursday last week it really goes into a lot of detail about what we're doing. And I know I can tell from some of the questions here that uh, some of the folks who are probably listening in now um, have read parts of it uh, and, and wanna understand it a little bit more, more deeply. This view is really intended to be a context um, view of what was shared in the Medium uh, article. And what it does is it just situates what we're doing now uh, more in line with what we've been doing from inception and what, what's gonna, you know, what's still coming between now and beta. So it, it really is that there was, there was work to do. It may not seem like work to do, but, but it takes something to get started and to uh, get through the ICO and, and all of that stuff. And then we really spend a lot of time, and this is not done to any particular time scale. It's really done so that we can fit more icons and more words um, at the end here uh, in, in the bright teal spaces. But, um, but it's meant to really give an indication of that there's a whole lot of work that's been being done that is been that I'm calling infrastructure at this stage. And, and some of that infrastructure is holochain infrastructure. Some of that infrastructure is holo infrastructure. Uh, all of it's required in order to make it work. And if you guys have been following the project for uh, quite a while, then you likely remember some of the pictures that we shared. Um, we, haven't, we haven't done this in a little while, but the, the really big architecture pictures that we, we used to share. 
when we started working, we were really focused on a lot of that infrastructure and the architecture of all of that infrastructure and how to get everything to work. And we were working to describe that in detail so that people understood the um, a little bit the complexity and uh, also could could there were questions it was answering for some of the the more technical followers uh, at the time. But what what you're seeing now is really a shift, and it's a shift to in context from that architecture view to really a product feature functionality view. And what this does in, in the medium uh, post, we, we really situate that with the whole low, you know, uh, suite of applications, which really are the host console, the publisher portal and Holofuel. And uh, Holofuel being really just the standalone app for, for transactions that are not hosting related. And, and then that article goes into a lot of depth about what's under the hood. And if you've read through it, you probably have seen, there's a lot of it that's been done, it has been written, uh, has been tested. I mean, we were in a test for Holofuel. Uh, we just sent out a demo, which was the, the hosted Holofuel using the, the Redux version of Holochain, which is the, the, the previous version of Holochain before the, what we just announced Holochain RSM. And so we, we did a lot of the work to build everything end to end using that. And it's really exciting right now to, to be at this point of transitioning over um, that work to Holochain RSM. So, because that, that's where, uh, you know, it sets us up for uh, real test and, the, and really getting into open alpha. So that's, that's super exciting. And I could, kind of walk us through every little picture and diagram on here, but I think that would be a waste of time. So I'm gonna just let you ask me some questions. No, great. Well, I think a lot of the que a lot of questions uh, that have come in over the last week have, have re relate to this roadmap. So I think what we should just do is dive into the questions that have already been asked. And maybe there's certain points in time where having this visual up during the AMA would be helpful to answer those questions. We can just, we can, we can, we can get up and when we can have it and bring it to life every now and again, but I'm great. It's very exciting to see this here. And yeah, thank you very much. All right, so first question. So is the new RSM affecting the short-term goals of open alpha, beta and hollow fuel being successfully launched? We were expecting open alpha for end of year 2020, but the latest update seems to reveal a lot of additional workload due to the RSM implementation. Thanks. Well, the Medium post actually has a lot of details of the work for Holo. And it, like I said, it does that recontextualization of the work, but it doesn't add workload. Um, we do need to migrate some of the DNAs to Holochain RSM. And yes, we do need to prepare the infrastructure for working with Holochain RSM, but we really spent so much time analyzing issues uh, during integration QA and I mean, finding issue after issue to resolve with the, the previous version of Holochain that it's a relief to be doing this migration because it means that, that we're moving on to actual work of building Holo uh, applications and, and, and getting the entire suite working together. So at the time, you know, that was still also working on our temporary networking solution for that version of Holochain. And we're going to be re releasing Elemental Chat soon. And that runs on the, the new version of RSM networking as well as running on the Holoports. So this has us cross a really important juncture, you know, with having RSM applications working with Holo hosting infrastructure. Um, I think, Arthur, why don't you speak a little bit to the, uh, the networking issue? Because I think it's super important for people to understand this shift from temporary networking to whole chain networking. Sure. Um, we, you know, whole chain has never been intended to have any kind of centralized networking. Um, it's just that debugging distributed systems is hard. And so we put some, um, temporary infrastructure in place in, in using SIM2H as kind of a central switchboard. But um, it it was still too centralized, meaning the the it didn't yield very easily to the transition for going completely peer-to-peer. -peer. In the new version of um, Holochain, Holochain RSM, the 
networking is built on a different approach. First of all, we're using more existing standards that are also fast and proven, like we're using the quick Q U I C um, protocol, which is actually what HTTP three, the new, the new HTTPS three standard is being built around, um, which allows for some faster connections and all that kind of stuff, but it, it uses um, end to end encrypted TLS certificates and what we are doing as our debugging stage thing in the new version of Holochain is we're using essentially a central proxy that allows these peers to, to create a tunnel to each other because many times peers are behind NAT or firewall and can't be reached directly because um, they don't necessarily have Holochain exposed on an external port. And so they can make a request, they can make a connection to a proxy that has public IP addresses, and then people can reach them through that proxy. And um, what we're doing in the debugging stage right now is just running a central proxy. But then the proxy software is actually going to be distributed with and built into Holochain. So anybody can be a proxy. And then nodes can choose who they want to have be their proxy. And they can even, if they're trying to you know, hide their traffic, they can even bounce around assigning different proxies at different times or whatever. Um, but it, in any case, it's poised to have us truly be peer to peer because the it, it, it isn't designed around requiring a central proxy at all. Um, and it's just that, um, again, debugging distributed systems is hard. And so it's helpful to have a place where we can actually track and log Play, you know, failed connections and failed tunnels, and and you know, so, so that we can actually debug what's happening with our with our gossip protocols and that kind of stuff. Um, much easier to see that way. Well, and and thanks, Arthur. To circle that back to the question, you know, which was really about the workload. Um, the 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 critical thing that I will say about that is uh, related to what Arthur was saying is the, you know, we weren't on, we we were going to have to do a lot of replacement work to get from where we were with SIM2H to um, real networking in that version as well. And so some of that work is no longer necessary because of what they've built in the Holochain RSM. So in some ways it's like where certain things were added, other things were taken away um, in, in terms of the, the RSM migration. And then most of the rest of the stuff were, were things that were already on the roadmap. It just was not named in the ways that you're seeing it here. I mean, I think that. Okay. So, about, so, okay, so kind of bridging into the next question, which does the hollow roadmap get influenced by the RSM update? If so, how? And can you provide us some deeper insights about general dates, timeframes to certain milestones? Sure. Well, for, for one thing, so, so the updated roadmap now is on the website as of today. And you can, if you read through the, the medium, post, which goes into a lot of the details, it goes not just into the listed milestones, but takes a step further a little bit uh, more deeply into the dependencies or the apps or the backends that are also required. And each of those is sort of given, like we talk a little bit about where that is, whether it needs to be migrated to RSM, whether it's something that needs to be uh, additionally built. But when I say additionally, it didn't mean that it didn't also already need to be built in Holochain as an app. Um, so, so those are, those are things that we've been working on. We really were, uh, cycling quite a while, uh, working with getting Holofuel working on hosting. Um, and a lot of that was due to trying to solve so many, I mean, if you've been reading the updates that we gave on a daily best basis, a lot of that was, um, about trying to solve conductor issues, um, and finding bugs in the conductor and then stepping back and reworking the old version of Holochain. So, so that's something where we feel like we've, we've kind of stepped away from that with the latest release that, that just came out that actually was a demonstration of hosted, uh, Holofuel hosted. Um, we, we set aside any, you know, there were areas, one of the reasons we're not making that public is, is because if we, we know that if we take it to larger and larger groups of people, you will begin to hit some of the issues that came up with the Holochain conductor using the old version. And that's why we're keeping it to a small um, testing group that, that is working on it. It was still useful. It was giving us information. It allowed us to find all of the integration uh, 
issues essentially that we knew we needed to find. Um, but, but at the end of the day, uh, it needs to be done in whole chain RSM. And so <clears throat> I, think, I think what's wanted here is a little bit more about the, the dates and the time frame. We're already working to migrate to Holochain RSM. We are well on our way. Within a few weeks, we're going to have the first app working for hosts using, you know, with Holoports uh, prepared to serve Holochain RSM applications. So that that right there is huge. We we started we started doing this work immediately once the the Holochain RSM was was ready, and uh, that's coming in a couple of weeks. The, the, the milestone or the, that comes immediately after that one takes that same app, which is Elemental Chat, and makes it available using all of the hosting infrastructure. Um, so that one takes a little bit more. So, so let me put this in some other terms. For the first infrastructure milestone, which will be ready in a few weeks, that just means we have to get one application, Elemental Chat, working on RSM. By the way, that's already uh, underway. It's working. Uh, we've we've got we've got that app built at this point, um, and it requires having Holoports able to serve that application for hosts. For the second infrastructure milestone it means we will have to have Elemental Chat working on RSM, but also we'll need to have um, Service Logger, the DNA, migrated to Holochain RSM, as well as parts of the Holo Hosting app uh, migrated to, to um, Holochain RSM. So when we get to that second infrastructure milestone, not only will all of the infrastructure end to end that allows for hosting be set up and tested using whole chain RSM, but we'll have three of the major um, under, under, underlying backend DNAs working with whole chain RSM. So I think that's really critical. Those, those are the two things that are coming first and they're coming as, as soon as possible. I mean, I, I can give timelines when it comes the way that we work uh, are, is, is very uh, much an agile uh, team where we don't go projecting how long it's going to take exactly. Um, so as we get closer, we'll be able to say right now, I can say the first milestone is coming in a few weeks. Super. I think it's helpful to keep this screen up because the next question uh, is also about dates milestones. So can you give us a date for the whole, I feel like you're answering the questions before I'm asking them today. Just, <laughs> well, I don't no, know. I, 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 <laughs> it's I don't great. Know. Good to some of this with the specific questions. <laughs> All right, so could you give us a date for the Holofuel swap? When is the swap coming on? We want the exact date. So a few different <laughs> questions there. I, I believe there'll be, of everyone watching, everyone will be thinking about this, so. Great. Well, the whole fuel swap happens at our beta release. It just cannot happen sooner than that. And beta happens after we've tested a full feature open alpha. That's everything that's on the roadmap. You're muted. I know. I was trying to annotate. Okay, so so we're talking about betas happening at that point. Oh. Is that correct? Exactly. There we go. Okay, so super. So all of the the releases that you're talking about, Mary, that uh, get us to here after these series of releases happen, and then we have the full feature review, and that period is the open alpha transitioning into beta. Well. Uh, one, one quick thing, open alpha starts sooner than that. And that's what I think some of the other questions are. Open alpha starts as soon as the broader community can begin testing. And so different, I mean, each one of these diagrams that you're looking at or icons that you're looking at on this roadmap, the reason they're different colored is because they represent what I call a different product in the whole suite of applications. So the green ones are the host console um, and then the purple ones are the publisher portal. And then the, 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 little, the one that is displayed as if it were a mobile app only, which it's not, um, is Holofuel. So each of these can be tested in open alpha 
by the wider community when we get to the milestone. So as, as we did in the past, we're gonna go through cycles, right? So, so a particular milestone or release would, would actually go through a QA cycle and get some community testing, and then it will be made available for the open alpha um, community to test. And open up, that, that really is whoever basically comes in and says, I wanna, I wanna be a tester. So if you're a host, um, right now we've only been up to now we've only had community hosts who have who meet certain technical requirements be able to have access and be able to do testing with us because at the time we needed them to be able to switch around and uh, go into different test environments and they had to have keyboards and monitors and things like that which is not typically required for the holoports um, when we hit these milestones they will be made available such that anybody that has a holoport, so if you've got a host console um, uh, milestone, anybody who has a holoport will be able to get that update onto their holoport, be able to log in and be able to see it, test it, whatever they wanna do with that. Um, and, and that will continue, we'll have different folks, it'll be more an open, we'll, probably with the publisher portal, uh, we, we haven't done this at this point, but. Um, we would want, people would need to go through a sort of a sign up period to, to do that, but it would be open to the public. Anybody who wanted to test out being a publisher could be part of that testing. So that is an open alpha. Um, it's just that it's not full feature until it gets to the end of these. Okay, super. So one of the questions that's come up a lot since the recent announcement was like, why do we, why are we so unfocused? Well, can't we just build Holofuel? Um, what are all these different apps? Right. Uh, well, hosting, well, there's a couple of things in that question. And it, uh, I think, I think it, it, it points to a few things. One is Holofuel isn't the Holo network. Holofuel is one part of the Holo network. So we can't just build Holofuel and be done. So that, that's, to, that's to say one, one part of it. But I think the question is really, why are we moving on and doing these elemental chat uh, releases here, calling them infrastructure releases? Why don't we just build what we need uh, instead of that? And the, the best reason is one, elemental chat's already built. Our team, the Holo, the Holo hosting team, didn't build it. We actually had, um, a, that was built by Phil, uh, who, who's been working on uh, developer tools. And we're, we're using it as the test application because it's so quick and easy to have it prepared. And it also, Holofuel is one of our most complex DNAs. It, it really requires uh, more end to end than, than almost any of the other ones that we're doing. And yes, it has a UI, but the UI that it has, we would rather we would rather not be focused on trying to build the short-term version of it right now so that we can have you test that and focus on getting the hosting applications of the host console and the publisher portal built. So all three of these use Holofuel under the hood. So the minute we get to the second release of the host console, which is the one that's listed right here on the roadmap called invoices, that's using the Holofuel DNA. So we are working to migrate Holofuel now, but Elemental Chat already works on RSM. The whole, th everything that we need for Elemental Chat already works. It's the easiest thing to use to test the infrastructure. Okay, perfect, thank you. So well, I, I know hopefully some of the people asking the question will then have the benefit of playing around with Elemental Chat in right the next few weeks and and yeah be able to experience what this ecosystem is all about so thank you very 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 helpful okay so maybe we can be oh actually so the next question here is when are nanos being shipped um i was going to say we could be done with the with the, the image here but um we well, actually, I didn't end up putting nanos on this image. I probably should have, but I left that out. Sorry about that. Um, we actually have 20 nanos that have recently been manufactured and they're going, uh, they're, they're basically going to be sent to the team members for testing. Um, just in the last day, might have been even today, 
um, we deployed an update to HPOS. HPOS is the Holoport operating system. And that deploy, no, nobody really saw it. We didn't make a big deal out of it. We didn't go put it in some grand announcement because really all that it does is, is it updates what gets automatically downloaded to Holoports. But what is important about that update and that deploy is that it includes all the changes needed to support nanos on the network. So we'll, we're gonna be testing the nanos internally before we give the manufacturer the green light to produce the rest of them. And then we'll get those shipped out. Thank you. More testing. When, when can we test the hollow fuel alpha? Well, I, I sort of answered this one in, in one of the previous questions, but basically, um, so I think it's important to, to maybe step back and talk about the demo that we just um, sent out. The demo is, it's fantastic, right? I mean, it, it shows Holofuel being used through a browser and Holofuel is a distributed application. So this is a Holochain app, like distributed app being accessed and, and used via the browser, uh, which is not exactly uh, decentralized. Arthur, do you wanna say that again? Say something? Just, just that it's being used via a browser pointing at a hosting framework, not pointing at localhost, right? right. Like, Holo chain apps all, all or can be used by a browser pointing locally, but the point is that this is actually pointing to the, the hosting framework. Right. Which, which really is talking about, it's using the end-to-end -end infrastructure of hosting, right? It's using all of the parts and pieces that have the DNS, find it, and you could probably say all the right words right now. I'm not looking at one of the architecture diagrams. Um, but, but the point of that is, is that's really exciting and it's great that we got it there. It's what we needed to do to complete kind of getting that end-to-end -end infrastructure working for hosting, okay? Um, but, but it's not, we're not releasing that to the larger testing community because it's still using the old version of Holochain. Um, and that, that Holochain conductor was giving us a lot of trouble. And we know that if we try to have too many people use it, we'll start hitting some, some issues. So, um, but as we migrate to Holochain RSM, the Holofuel DNA, the Holofuel backend, it's used extensively by the host console, by the publisher portal, as well as Holofuel. And so we're gonna begin testing it in open alpha with everybody right at the point that I said earlier, which is when we release the second milestone for the host um, console. And that's where we are creating invoices, hosts are creating invoices to send. So that, that's, that's where you'll be able to test Holofuel in open alpha. Well, that's the first place. Super, all right, final datey question, I believe. So when will open alpha be available? Is this, are we talking about Q1 2021? So, we're gonna be in an open alpha period for quite a while. I think of as I've just walked us through on the roadmap, um, you know, we've ordered the work to basically just take advantage of the, the backend functionality that we've either completed or that we can most easily get up and running quickly. And that's sort of what kind of creates the order of why we're releasing some of the features in the way that we're doing it. Um, so some of these milestones, are going to be, uh, are expected to be in 2020 and some may not be until 20 or early 2021. I don't have exact dates, but for sure we're going to be in open alpha in 2020. And in fact, we hit that point when we release the infrastructure number two milestone, because at that point we will have a hosted Holochain application available via a web browser that's pointing into the whole hosting infrastructure. And that will be available to the wider community. see the mouse going crazy there. Thank you very yeah. much. So, Art, uh, when DeFi on Holochain? Um, first of all, I, I think DeFi is kind of just a fancy buzzword for decentralized financial apps that are more sophisticated than just tradable tokens. And pretty much everything on Holochain, anytime you build a currency on Holochain, it is that, right? So 
Holofuel is a kind of DeFi application. Holo REA, the resource event agent accounting framework that's been built on, on Holochain and is being uh, ported over to RSM, um, is a, a huge example of that. I think that's more sophisticated than any DeFi thing that I've seen on blockchain because blockchain ones tend to be more like smart contracts, simplified, smaller scope things. And this is more like supply chain accounting infrastructure. And that's definitely DeFi. Um, and we also have groups with projects in the works to have currencies backed by food, energy, transportation, those kinds of things. Those are all DeFi type projects. And I think we're gonna see more of those kinds of projects emerging as people actually need to kind of collide with real world use and solutions that can scale and you know, blockchain solutions don't tend to get them there. So I think we'll see more of that on Holochain. Super, David, thanks. There's also the P2P. Yeah, there's a P2P lend peer-to-peer -peer lending app or the lending of hollow fuel that actually Guillaume and Eduardo from EY double S have we they were showcasing with a few people across the ecosystem last Thursday and so got some good pointers and these are also like some people that they're sharing the app with are you know big DeFi advocates DeFi investors etc so uh, again, if, if there's people out there that are really curious about DeFi and Holochain and want to learn more about Holo REA, learn more about Holofuel, see demo of the peer-to-peer -peer lending app, just, just get in touch via whatever channel you're watching, whether it's YouTube or Telegram or, or the forum and um, you know, find, find your way into a demo. Okay. Uh, with the new Holochain RSM, I've got a bit of an echo here. Okay, with the new Holochain RSM, what is currently the biggest hurdle left for Holo and Holochain? The one thing that might cause the project to fail? Um, well, what's interesting to me is that as we've kind of gotten more of our act together internally, it seems to me like a lot of the, the likely failure, failure points are, are really to do with external factors such as you know, another product maybe using some of our technology patterns, some of the same kinds of patterns that we're using for scalability, but managing to outcompete us in the marketplace. Maybe it's because they're, you know, funded by an 800 pound gorilla like Google or, you know, I don't know, something like that. Like if somebody um, chased after our same space using something that scales as well as, as our approach does, you know, that would be a, an external factor we may have have challenges overcoming. Um, to me, that looks like one of the, the more likely challenges. Mary or David, do you have other ideas? Well, I, I just think it's interesting. You know, a, a lot of times people are are saying, you know, what do you guys need to do? What's gonna? What's the risk that you're managing for right now? First of all, we're looking at a lot of different risks, and people ask questions about a lot of them, including, well, what happens if the market, you know, crashes, or what happens if, um, you know, well, what happens if you get somebody like Trump elected president for a second time, or whatever, you know, some real crazy things, um, but. I, I think I think what Arthur's saying is somewhat true. You know, most of the risks right now are external to the the organization. I don't see that there are any development risks at this stage of of development um, exactly. And and I think that you know the way we've operated so far, you know, point to that we we are able to and committed to adjusting with those, a lot of those external circumstances. I mean, what we've done even in the last year, year and a half, what with, you know, the, the shift in, in, in the, the crypto market, the, the you know, the team, uh, you know, resetting that, that we went through and then COVID hitting and all of these different things. But the thing is, is we're just committed to getting this done and the team is gonna get it done. And, and, and I think, you know, it, Arthur was even talking about some, something similar to this earlier. And I, it, it's like, well, this, this is just are unstoppable and, um, in that sense. And some of that is about just like broader, larger commitments, the things that Arthur and Eric have been working on for the last decade and longer. Um, and you just don't stop working on the things that are your purpose. 
Yeah. If I could just say that slightly differently, we were building this stuff before Holofuel or Hot existed, and we would keep building this stuff if Holofuel or Hot ceased to exist or something like that, because we think this needs to be built. And so I don't think internally we're, we're going to be able to be stopped in that regard. Yep. Okay, super. I'll just jump in and add one thing to to this response here because we have Mary and I just reviewed the risk register last week. So it is a, it's an interesting time to be asked this question. And I'd say that, you know, over the last few years, there's many, many times pops up this project or this approach is going to look at this. It's faster than whole chain or you scared or the threat of this competitor. And there's some really awesome people across our ecosystem that have taken to then going into the details and deconstructing each of those. And even art when you're talking about a Google or somebody else, unless my experience has been that unless that group has a very similar orientation, it's really hard to not want to just chuck in, a, you know, a staking network that gives a return you know, thousand X return to the early investors or just put in a little tweak in the smart contract here. And, and just because like all the promises and commitments of these efforts have been made using the pattern of seed investors through to, you know, private sale investors attracting huge amounts of funds from different places. And, and people haven't been in the business of, not having that money thrown away, but they're in the business of getting an outside return from that really, really early stage investment. And so you look at their economic systems, you look at their miners or stakes or host systems and all of the things that they're pretending aren't in, you know, different from blockchain are all hidden in there. It's all in the fine print. So I'm yet to see something come along with the combination of the technical leaning as well as, I don't know if social is like the wrong, but, but, but that more the social orientation around how coordination, collaboration, et cetera, can happen at scale. And so therefore like the deep care for the hosting community and the way the hosting ecosystem will work. And so it is totally possible that it's out there. Uh, it's just, that hasn't been my, my experience is that underlying pattern shows up over and over again. And I just wanted to jump into one more risk because I think this one comes up in my world a lot, which is product market fit. I also believe for hollow, we have a phenomenal product market fit, phenomenal amount of latent demand for this truly distributed hosting network, which I can't wait for us to be, to be testing. Um, and so I think that's another thing that we just, we haven't activated a lot. And, and really that, that speaks to your point, Art, around someone getting and using similar patterns and going to market fast or more effectively. And I would like to think that across our ecosystem, we're connected into that world, you know, into really where our customers are going to be in a way that makes us really compelling and great to work with. Yeah. There's something in what you're saying, David, that I really love, and it speaks to innovation. It's hard for those large companies to really innovate at once they get to that size, once they get to that scale. They have so many other commitments in what their current business model already is to protect, essentially, their current business model. And so it does take a rethinking and what you pointed to was that it isn't just a rethinking of the technology, but it's also a re rethinking of the social agreements, essentially, that we're doing with Holo and Holochain. And so that is a profound innovation. Um, and and it's, it would take something, it, it would take a, a re, I, I can't imagine one of those large companies, like you were saying, Arthur, uh, really thinking that they could or would want to do this and that they wouldn't bring in a lot of the wrong pattern and they wouldn't actually be able to do it. So there you go, everyone. An unstoppable force is the conclusion the three of us have come to in this, <laughs> in this AMA. All right, so 
hang on a second, there are new competitors in the area of distributed hosting. I'm curious to know what Opportunity Holoport software will have running on, say, AWS or Docker-like containers, if not the Holoport software. Are there limitations deploying the WASM code to a cloud? Uh, yeah, so there's a, a few things kind of collapsed in with this question, and um, I, I want to sort of pull it apart a little bit. Our, our endpoint hosting software for running a host node is all open source. So you could install Holoport OS image, not just on a Holoport piece of hardware that we've sold, but as a, as a, cloud, as a cloud image instance, right? So you could run that on AWS or DigitalOcean or you know, other, Azure or whoever else you might wanna host it in. Um, as far as Docker-like containers, we're not likely to go with Docker-like containers for hosting because our approach of actually building Holoport OS as a Nix OS image is that Nix OS is serving the role of the packaging for a deterministic build, which, which Docker would normally be providing, right? And um, so, but the thing is that the Holoport OS also includes some additional controls that Docker doesn't give you, including the ability to do some of this automatic updating and that kind of thing, which is really required enough for, for us to be able to keep our hosting infrastructure in sync. It would be very hard for us to manage, you know, tens of thousands of hosts out there that have many different versions of hosting infrastructure. Um, because we do have some in the hosting framework, we do have some points of centralization that need to be speaking coordinative protocols between these hosts. And if they're in different versions, it's going to be very hard to, to manage. So in any case, the point is you can do this kind of stuff on cloud instances if you want. You don't have to do it on our, our hardware. We're not really focused on, on that at the moment, although you know, in the original Indiegogo campaign, we did sell some cloud hosted instances as nano, cloud nano type instances. And so as we ship nanos and we go into open alpha and stuff, we'll probably also be providing some cloud hosted Holoport um, OS images as well that that we've done the configuration and setup for. And um, so in, in any case, the, it's not incompatible with cloud. It's just since in some ways what we're trying to do is compete with the Googles and Azures and, and Amazons by creating a peer hosting infrastructure, we're not focused on becoming dependent on them, on people having to build on them either. Super, thank you. So how will Holochain and the CAL or the cryptographic autonomy license be affected by encryption regulations such as the Earn It Act in the US? And also, will an agent be able to change their password? Well, those are two very different kinds of questions. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. I, I think that the encryption, encryption regulation is a risk for anybody interested in online freedom. I mean, I think that it's ridiculous. And there's lots of organizations out there that you can get involved with that, that talk about this. The, um, but I don't think that the legislation that's being pointed to here, the Earn It Act, which I just don't think it has a great chance of becoming law. Even groups like Scopus Labs that kind of do that sort of estimation, you only give it a 4% chance of getting you know, beyond where it is right now. Um, but we really should be attending to these things and getting involved early, right? To, in, to prevent those kinds of policies from enactment uh, or, or even to push back against the ones that have been enacted. Um, so, so if there's, if, if there's anything that I would say is look them up, be, be, on, the, be on the lookout for, for these, look for groups that you can work with like the, the Freedom, oh gosh, I'm terrible at remembering names of organizations, Arthur, help me. Um, <laughs> yeah, EFF, Electronic yes, Frontier. Yes, EFF, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Electronic Freedom Frontier um, is, is a great one to start with. I, did I say it wrong? <laughs> but anyway, look, look these groups up and get involved with them because they're, they're really like on the forefront of, of these things across different uh, jurisdictions because I think it's important in multiple places.
but um, let me just answer a couple aspects of the crypto cryptography thing. Cal, I don't think would be affected at all, really. Um, but Holochain, if there were restrictions on export of cryptography and that kind of stuff, but we're not doing any advanced cryptography that hasn't already been exported. We're using libraries that exist. Um, yeah. And then can an agent change their password? Let me actually just address that, which is a little bit of a different conversation. So Holochain agents use keys, not passwords. Now, if, if you are unlocking Holochain to run locally and decrypting the, the, the local data stores or opening your key store, um, you, you probably have your key store password encrypted. And yes, you can change your key store password because um, but Holochain agents use keys, not passwords. And we're building key management in so that people can change their keys. Right now in the blockchain world, you lose your key, you lost your money, and you're kind of screwed. In Holochain, if somebody you know steals your steals your phone and you had apps running on it, you could go to your laptop and revoke the keys that were on, on your phone and be able to change those keys so that you maintain control over your data, your apps, that kind of thing. Um, but Holo hosted users, we have a slightly different thing. They generate their keys based on a combination of their email password and some randomized salt stuff. So it, and they won't have quite the same UI for doing key management because we're kind of hiding that layer from them. And um, so it's not as easy for hosted users to change their keys as for Holochain agents. So it all depends on, on which, which layer you're talking about. Cool. Okay, a couple on revenue models. So revenue is an important aspect for all projects in order to survive, keep the project company running. What's Hollow's way of generating profit revenue? So Holo's main revenue source is the 1% transaction fee on Holo Fuel. And you can think of this kind of like the service fee that Airbnb charges for matchmaking you with places to stay. And they charge somewhere around 12%, 10 or 12%. Um, and we're charging significantly less than that and able to kind of guarantee more consistency. So we're essentially matchmaking applications with hosts, right? And then matchmaking web users with hosts that are hosting those applications. Um, so we're, meet, we're meeting, matchmaking the application people with hosts that actually fit their profile, that fit the needs for them to provide the hosting power in the way that they require it. Um, and uh, we charge 1%. That's, that's the revenue model. That's not too high? Yeah, the next question is, isn't that too high? Shouldn't you be charging 0.1%? Wouldn't that be more reasonable? You know, uh, no, I don't think 1% is anywhere too high. Again, if you compare it with, Uber or Airbnb or existing cloud hosting infrastructure where you're paying 100% to them, right? As opposed to paying, we're only taking 1% of what gets paid to the hosts. Um, and when you consider comparing us to the rest of the decentralization space, right? Like running dApps on Ethereum costs millions of times more in gas fees than to power those same things on a centralized cloud, cloud hosting platform. We think we can provide the same kind of decentralization, in some ways even more decentralization than Ethereum, and be able to have the, we'll see the, the prices start to drop down into the range to become competitive with cloud hosting, AWS type, type price, prices. So taking 1% when we're already ch costing millions of times less than blockchain apps already is a fraction of a percent compared to the rest of the decentralized space. Boom, okay. So how can Holochain cooperate with blockchain? Is any cross-chain idea for such things possible? Uh, for example, yeah, that, that, look, let's just focus on that. So how can Holochain cooperate with blockchain? Any cross-chain ideas? So, uh, I mean, there's, there's a group of people, the GM working with the underscore protocol folks, they had a, a contract with DAOstack to help them create some uh, off-chain wiki type infrastructure because it's too expensive. So you have a DAO that makes decisions about things and they can record a hash of their decision on the Ethereum blockchain, which is where that DAO is managed, but they can't 
record the content of the decision and the discussion that went into it and all that kind of stuff because it's too expensive to store that stuff on Ethereum. And so um, they were working on a project where they use uh, the whole chain wiki app as a side chain for you to have all of those types of conversations and then you can reach a decision and you take the hash of that decision in the whole chain data, post that on Ethereum, and now you've got, for example, a whole chain cooperating with a blockchain in that scenario. I think we'll see a number of scenarios where people would want to use whole chain as a side chain for different blockchain things, um, kind of like the way the Lightning Network is used or, or things like that. But I think what people may then sort of my hope is as they use Holochain as a side chain for this. And also, by the way, the Holo infrastructure, Holo hosting infrastructure may make that really easy because I'm looking at being able to provide um, multiple types of logins. There's your email and password, but there could also be your Ethereum public key and a proof that you control it, for example, as your password um, and be able to have that actually function as a holo hosted user. So you could actually bind Ethereum accounts or other blockchain accounts to holo hosted accounts. Um, since most of the blockchain end users aren't used to actually hosting anything themselves, right? They're not, they're, they're depending on miners and stakers. Um, and uh, anyway, the, the, the point is, I think that holo chain can, can operate that way. And my hope is after some developers do some projects like that, that they start to realize, wait, what are we using that other blockchain for in the first place? Why, why do we have to go back and store that hash over there when we can actually manage the whole DAO over here? You know, like, and so we'll see. I think that may become a migration path for some projects. Super, thank you. Uh, so will the Holoport admin panels be able to administer more than one Holoport? Um, at the moment, the admin screen is per holoport, and maybe at some point we may have, we may create some ways to help people administer multiple devices, but that's not our initial focus. Really, at first, um, we're focusing on the, the small hosts. We do expect that, that the market may emerge over time where there might be like what we would call peer hosts and pro hosts that would actually be like building infrastructure in a data center. Um, but our focus right now is really on peer hosts and we may limit the number of peers you're allowed to to run right now and and if you then when we have like this pro hosting agreement type of level um, part of what we're looking at having pro hosts like requiring pro hosts to provide in order to be pro hosts is um proxy services for peer hosts because we have this problem of many of these these peer hosts are behind NATs and firewalls and the pro hosts would probably be on public IP addresses at data centers. And they would earn money for that as well. It's not just a, not just a pro bono service, but it basically would mean as, we, as pro hosts emerge, part of the requirement is that they're supporting the peer host infrastructure as well so that they don't get pushed out of the market. Okay, super. Thank you, Art. Thanks, Mary. I think we'll close it there for today, folks. So I think, thank you very much, Mary, for sharing the roadmap. Look forward to that being dissected across all of the various communities where we're part of. Uh, yeah, Art, Mary, the team, thanks so much for the building of RSM and the progress towards Open Alpha and then all of the clarity around what Open Alpha will involve uh, looking forward to looking forward to all of those releases for those of you who think if you're listening and there's we talked about a couple of different demos and releases upcoming and if there's something you really want to be a part of or you want to have more information then please get in touch with various channels so you can get more involved there uh, and apart from that I think thank you very much for sending in the questions thanks for everyone as part of the ecosystem and look forward to another AMA coming in the next few weeks. Thank you very much, Mary. Thanks, Art. Ooh, thank you. Signing off.